Hello, and welcome to another episode of Spoiled Surprise. The show is called Spoiled, not Spoiled Surprise, but it could be because we're going to surprise some people. Uh, We are here to review the recent Black Widow film from the MCU, from Marvel Studios, obviously, and spoil the heck out of it. So if you are here and you haven't watched the film yet, I recommend running away. Uh, But take the earbuds out of your your ears first, because otherwise you'll still hear us. Uh, We... Countdown, three, two, one. All right, game on, everybody. We're going to spoil city this thing. I'm joined today by Liana Rupert. What is up? How's it going? I'm excited to talk Black Widow, man. Let's do this. Yeah, you look like you could be one. You got the hair going for you. Oh, thank you. That's right. It's nice thing you ever said to me. <laughs> and Marcus Stewart is also here. Hey, I too am excited to discuss Black Widow because it feels like we've been waiting for this movie for the last 10 years. <laughs> uh, no joke. Yeah, I want to get into it. I think maybe to start, it'd be easiest to just jump into what was your expectation level? How hyped were you for this film uh, and all that? I don't know. Marcus, you want to go first? Like, what was your expectation level? You said you'd been waiting for it for a long time. Was that like excited waiting or just like, when am I going to see this film already? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was more because, you know, we were supposed to get this over a year ago, but then COVID happened, so it got delayed. So it was like it was like waiting for the original release and then having to wait for the new release on top of that. But I'd say my hype level was like high in the sense that like all the MCU films are at the very least good or like fun, even like stuff like Thor, The Dark World, like that movie isn't bad. It's enjoyable. It's just when you stack it against the other 50,000 films doesn't really hold up as uh, much. It's like, oh, this will probably be fine. Mm-hmm. And I like uh, Scarlett Johansson's uh, portrayal of Black Widow. I always have. So, and I've been wanting her to get a movie. I think it would be higher if this happened before Endgame. Because <laughs> it was, there was the sense of hollowness of like, and I guess we're spoiling Endgame here too. Um, you know, she, yeah, I assume not, people, if they're yeah, watching I would assume, this, they've, yeah. Yeah, she dies in that movie. So it was like, and we'll get into that um, when we get into the film itself. But it's like, man, I probably would be more excited if I if the character wasn't already like out of the franchise, seemingly. Because uh, then it's like, I don't know where you go from here. And that was my thought going in. So, you know, like I'd say decently high. Sure. Yeah. What about you, Liana? Learned at a very long time ago to not hype myself up for movies. So I went in with absolutely zero expectations because I wanted to enjoy it, but I was trying to distance myself from wanting to enjoy it. I love, I love Black Widow. I loved, and I'm with Marcus. I love Scarlett Johansson's portrayal. I feel like her and and Tony Stark's casting were on point. I had an opposite view though. I was actually really excited because of the fact that we knew Natasha died because you knew it was going to be an origins tale. And I felt like that was going to give us the closure we needed, because even though a lot of the comic lovers knew it was coming, a lot of the movie only Marvel fans had no idea. And it was she was just gone. And then it was this heartbreaking scene in Endgame. And then that was kind of it. So I felt like this was kind of I felt going in that this was going to be a kind of love letter to her and also a way for them to continue on her legacy that makes sense, but didn't feel like it was just kind of slapped together. So I, I was I was not hyped, but I if I 10 years ago, I would have been hyped. I would have been like really excited because this is a character I've cared about for a long, long time and followed very closely in the comic books. And I was interested to see because they also mentioned that they were going to kind of go off tier. This was going to be a part of that rollout of the new MCU. And so we knew it was going to be different. And I was interested to see like because this to me was a huge indicator of what kind of comedic style are they going to go into? What kind of cinematic style are they going to go into? And so I was I was cautiously excited. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, you guys have summed up similar. Your feelings are similar to mine. I I don't think I was really hyped for this movie at all back when it was originally coming out. I was like, OK, I like Black Widow fine. But um, I feel like it was just such a high with Endgame, right? Uh, yeah. And I liked Spider-Man Far From Home. That felt like kind of a fun denouement or however you want to say it to that phase of the MCU. This felt like the start of a new thing, obviously, but I wasn't hyped for it because I think I was just you know, overdosing on Marvel stuff. Uh, and then we had that year off and uh, my hype started to build the longer we waited. And then when the, and so I like, I was like peak excitement earlier in the year. And then the TV show stuff started happening on Disney plus. And I was like, Oh, this is scratching that itch. And then I kind of came down again. And I was like, eh, 
Black Widow. We'll see. So I went <laughs> to watch it um, with uh, Ben Hansen from Min Max. I know they talked about it on there, spoiled as well. So cat's out of the bag there. But yeah, we, we're still friends, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we went to see <laughs> yeah. it and we were talking about it beforehand. And he said the same thing. I was like, what's your excitement level? And a lot of people were like, six? I don't know. I want to see it. I'm here, obviously, but not super enthusiastic. And then walked out of the theater and I'm like, this delivered more than I expected. Like, I really liked it. I had a good time. And, you know, I'm curious to hear what you guys thought. But I, in terms of Marvel films, like, I definitely want to watch it again. You know, it's definitely up there. I don't want to say where exactly yet, but just your guys' impressions walking out of the theater. What do you think? Yeah, I got the same with you of like, I probably like this more than I thought I would, I guess, even though I was pretty like, like I said, I was like, oh, this will probably be fun and good. But I think I it impressed me more mainly because like the thing that I wanted most was this to feel as different as possible from the usual Marvel style. And it's like they have the perfect character for that because she's a spy and doesn't have any superpowers. Uh, so they could I was hoping they would go like like the Jason Bourne Mission Impossible kind of route with this because it seemed like that's what that character would lend herself to and they pretty much do in some really fun ways and then also some very comic booky ways especially towards the end <laughs> um so yeah like i had a lot more fun with it than i expected and i feel like at least personally my theater almost seemed surprised because they were like going nuts for everything that was happening <laughs> in a way that i it was it wasn't quite in game levels of like oh my god but everyone's like yeah 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 black widow's cool <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, so I think we were all collectively like, this was great. We had this table. We went to one of those dieted theaters because there's a little bit more distancing and why not grab a beer while you're, you know, <laughs> watch the movie. And this table in front of us kept like, there was like 20 times during the movie. She was like, oh no, she did. Oh no. And like, they were just like freaking out. And I like, I forgot how much I love that atmosphere of movies of just enjoying the moment together. Cause this is the first movie I've seen in theaters and over well over a year. Yeah, so. Me too. Uh -huh. I think that's all of us, right? Yeah. yeah. First movie since Sonic. Oh, no, wait. I saw F9. <laughs> but that oh, was okay. my first movie since uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. So it's, okay. it has been a while. But it, yeah, it was like a novel. Like, oh, yeah, theaters. And the movie theater what, like that I was in wasn't super crowded. I almost expected it to be. I mean, it was full, but not as full as I would have thought. Anyway, <laughs> regardless of that, uh, Black Widow, the movie kicks off. And it took me a while to like place the timeline. They mention... They mentioned the Sokovia Accords, so you're like, okay, this is somewhere around Civil War, obviously. Uh, and I was thinking, like, okay, is it post Civil War? But then as the movie went on, you're like, okay, I think it's actually in the middle of Civil War, before the airplane fight. Before no, the... it's after Civil War. Yeah. Are yeah. you sure they, though? They announced it before the movie came out that it was post Civil War. And, and so this is when they're on the run because remember at the end, uh, or in the beginning, Ross mentions that, oh, we already caught your friends, like like yeah. the ones that were cat, like we already got Ant Man and Falcon and them. Right. So the references yeah. like how Tony Stark's not talking to her anymore because there she was like uh, her sister was like, why didn't you call Tony Stark? And she was like, how oh, exactly on speaking terms right now? Yeah. So Marvel, Ooh. yeah, Marvel did come out officially say this was in between Civil War and Infinity War. But then at some point, she goes and breaks them out, and doesn't that happen in Civil War? Like near so, the uh, end? it's like. Wasn't it like the post credit scene where we see like Cap go get them or something? I haven't seen Civil War in a while. Sure. But so maybe there we're like splitting a, hairs. Like a teaser of like, oh, they're going to get broken up. We're probably splitting hairs, but it probably takes yeah. place during the credits of Civil War, let's say. Yeah, probably around that time. But it's definitely after the main movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I, anyway, regardless of that, yeah. So <laughs> Natasha's on the run from the government and she basically gets caught up into this past situation where she, you know, the Red Room stuff. And she gets roped into that with her sister, played by, um, oh gosh, I'm blinking her name. Uh, Florence. Florence. Uh, pronounced Poog? Poog? P-U-G-H. Yeah. And she was great. <laughs> what did you guys think of Florence Pugh? Dude, I, I didn't. I loved her. One, she pulled off the comedic. There was a lot of comedy in this movie to the point where it was like legitimately hilarious, but without trying too hard. And I feel like she was, again, perfect casting choice. She delivered some like of the most hilarious one-liners of the entire movie flawlessly and very organically. Like you could just picture two sisters having a conversation together and it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel scripted. And I really like there's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. And Florence actually, I, I found out today, uh, Polygon, I think wrote it up as 
uh, Florence was the one that advocated for it. It wasn't originally in the script. There's a, a scene where Alexis, their dad, and Black Widow and Yelena are all in a getaway together. And he's he like looks at her and he does the tried and true joke of you can't be mad unless you're on your period. And he was like, is it that time of the month? And she just like deadpan looks at him and she was like, no, you idiot. I don't have a uterus. And then it was kind of interesting the way the conversation happened after that because it was he kind of was taken aback and then she it was joking but also at the same time it was kind of juxtaposed as being of like these are the horrors that you su- you know subjected us to but she didn't say it in like a preachy way it was she was kind of matching joke for joke yeah, it was very cool. flippant yeah and that's very <laughs> much alexis's personality so she was speaking to him in his own language but he is the father and she says numerous times in the movie like the fake family was real to me and you guys are telling me I didn't matter. And so for her, that was kind of her way of saying like, they, she was like, they just go right up in there and they rip it all out. And she was just very upfront about it in a funny way. So it was easily digestible for those that may be uncomfortable with that kind of talk. And, and then he kind of had the same reaction that I've heard a lot in my life of just like, Oh, you don't have to be so clinical and nasty about it. I don't know why I feel the need to do that. <laughs> and I don't know it was just it was done and, and her like making fun of Black Widow for her post she's like why do you do that thing and like the hair flip why do you do that and it just it was so sisterly like yeah. those are the kind of jokes yeah. the pose thing was funny because then like later on you know Natasha does basically it. does a pose a landing <laughs> pose and she's like uh, rolling her eyes like that was that was funny yeah I thought I'm with you with the humor because like the first like 30 minutes to 40 minutes was not very funny I'm like, man, Marvel movies are usually funnier than this. And then when, yeah, Yeah. not that it was trying to be funny and was bad at it. It was just very serious. Yeah, no, they just weren't making jokes. Yeah, they just just weren't landing. But then, uh, you know, I think once the family stuff started to kick in, like then the jokes happened and I was like, oh, okay, I'm on board. Not that I wasn't on board before. It had that sort of like Jason Bourne style espionage combat action. Which I was beginning is was cool, like, but I appreciated that they had comedy in it as well. Yeah. The opening was like, was that the darkest opening of any of Marvel film outside of like, you know, this is a lot more fantastical, but like the beginning of Endgame, maybe. <laughs> um, but in terms of just the tone of it, I was like, wow, this is a. I, I loved it because it set, you know, it, it made you made you care about Natasha. I mean, more than maybe you, you probably already did going into it, but like establishing her her childhood and stuff, which has always been one of the biggest mysteries. Oh, sure, for like the MCU, if you're not familiar with the character in comics of like, you were seeing stuff that she only like maybe briefly touched on in the other films. Like I think what yeah. age, age of Ultron is the only time she's ever really talked about it. You're talking uh, about the movie starts with the opening of these kids in the suburban neighborhood in Ohio. I want to say. Yeah. And then dad comes home and it's like, we got to get out of here. And it's clear that there's something going on. They're in trouble and they're on the run. And it kind of like is revealed that, Oh, they're spies in the U S working for Russia, supposedly, or the USSR or whatever. Well, wouldn't have been USSR in the nineties. So yeah. So for Russia and, uh, that's where it kind of comes in. Cause you're like, wait, Natasha's supposed to be Russian. So what's her background here? So it was kind of fun to see that like, yes, she has that background, but then also, um, you know, she has an American accent. So this is kind of why <laughs> then yeah. this is maybe also why she was so rebellious. Cause she had this weird experience when she was younger of getting to live a life of, of unique freedom in the U S. So that was kind of cool, interesting backstory that they gave those characters. I think that's like, to me, the magic of this movie too is, and I think it does it well. I think it's honestly, you know, spicy take, but I feel like it's done it better than any MC movie right. out there is to me, the magic of it was in the quiet moments. Um, I really yeah. like those moments that didn't depend on dialogue or those moments that didn't depend on something crazy happening and outlandish and, ooh, look, stunts, tight suit, guns, shiny. Like it, it, there were those quiet moments of the friendship. There were the quiet moments of distrust. Um, I like the fact that when they reunited, I, this is a testament to Scarlett Johansson's acting though, is when she meets up at the, the Budapest flat and her and Yelena see each other for the first time in God knows how many years. And when they're facing off, they both have their weapons drawn on each other. It was a very subtle eye twitch with Scarlet uh, where you could tell she just like, obviously her hands have the gun. So it's like, we have to be prepared to, 
Bradley still with the Red Room or is she not? But her eyes were just elated. You could see that she was just so excited to see her sister safe and healthy because she didn't know if Yelena made it out or not. And I don't know. It was those tiny moments to me, those tiny little details that were brought together because of the great actresses behind them. Yelena's actress is the same exact way. It was that tiny nuance of it doesn't all have to be flashy, big superhero gimmick. That's definitely still there. Like she's dangling from a helicopter and grabbing somebody off of a freaking avalanche. But it didn't rely upon that. And the first half to me, I felt like did a really good job, almost world building, which is odd to say when we think about how long the MCU has been going on. But they built this entire world in an authentic way that felt natural and organic. And it felt like we were along the way. And they didn't have the two sisters reunite and everything was honky dory. Like you saw them process what that meant. And I thought that was that was really well done, to be honest. I think it's a top three movie for me for the MCU. Like, yeah, I think it did a good job establishing that dynamic, <clears throat> the family dynamic. So by the time that you got to see them again as adults, I was actually looking forward to it. I, even the brief moments that you saw them as sisters, it was really endearing. Yeah. Uh, so like, I was like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, I, I'm already on board with these two. And I think that the adult actresses uh, pulled it. I think the chemistry between them as well as like, the dad and the mom who we'll get into was phenomenal. And my favorite part of the whole film was just the performances between that, those main four. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can get into that. I just want to like overview the plot real quick. So black widow, Natasha's she's on the run and she basically just drawn into the, this conspiracy where the guy who trained her in the red room, you know, we know about that history. She finds out that he's still alive, even though she thinks he killed him. And so that's how she gets involved. Like, okay, I'm going to go take this guy down again. But more so than that, her sister has broken free of his control. And she's like, there's, there's dozens of other black widows out there who are all under this guy's control. And so we need to set them all free. So that's kind of like the basic premise. And to do that, they're like, we should set our, our dad, our fake dad (laughs) from when we were kids free. So he can lead us to our mom and then she can lead us to the big bad. Yeah, uh, I I thought you know plot wise it's totally fine. So it's more about character dynamics as you guys were talking about. And once the family, the whole family gets wrapped in together, I thought it was really fun, and I like those characters a lot. What did you guys think of the rest of the family, the dad and the mom? I thought Red Guardian was great. David Harbor, mm-hmm. great Russian accent on that guy. <laughs> um, but I thought he was a lot of fun. I loved his like. Con- like his insistence on wanting to know what Captain America thought of him, like the uh-huh. stories of like, oh uh, yeah, he's the third down with Cap, man. You know, we were, but we were peers. You know, we weren't trying to one up each other. Like he saw me as an equal, but does he talk about me? Like just him going on and on and being stuck on like his glory right. days. There were I so many him. references to Captain America in this film. I was like half expecting. I was like, I wonder if somehow he's going to show up. Like, I are they going to jump in that last scene? <laughs> Maybe it's possible just because they referenced him so much. It felt like he could, even though I know um, I think Chris is supposedly done. Like his contract's up. So yeah, yeah uh, that was I interesting. To show up too. Like then that last scene when they all part their ways, like the you know, Yelena goes in with mom and dad and Scarlet's like, I've got my other family to repair. I was expecting like Cap just to like drop in and all superhero like. It would have been funny if he dropped in and did the hair flip. <laughs> is <laughs> with his short hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I I he was fun for being a like total goofball. You also took him seriously like when he got serious, he felt it. Uh Yeah. So yeah, and the same with the uh, Melina, <clears throat> the uh, the fake mom. Everyone's fake in this movie turns out. <laughs> it's fake really? siblings, fake parents. Um I'm a He's Rachel controlling Wise. Pig, apparently yeah, torturing pigs, taking her oxygen it. away. <laughs> I could tell that was Rachel Weiss until the end. Like, I was like, there's some moments where she looks exactly. I was like, is that the girl from the Mummy? And she would look exactly like her. Then other times she would look nothing like her. And then finally, I was like, I have to Google this. This is driving me nuts. That was her. Was yeah, my old crush in the early 2000s. I love the Mummy so much. I was like, uh-huh. yeah, she's back. But yeah, I uh, I'm a Rachel Wise Mark. So I, I didn't even know she was in this movie till I saw her. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if she has some superhero serum in her or something, but doesn't seem like she's aged. Twenty years. Oh. <laughs> she, didn't it. she didn't. I don't think she had it. I think she created it. Yeah, she's no, talking about the actress. I think the oh, actress has right? some special serum going on. She's she looks great. <laughs> she's an she's actual an Black Widow. Yeah, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't believe it was her. No, I like them. I think. I think they had a really cool dynamic. I like how they have the cringe vibe. Like when they're sitting around the table, the dad <laughs> is like, "Oh, you look supple," and. Like widow and a little bit, or like 
Mm-hmm. No, yeah. even though I thought that yeah. that dinner scene was really good. Yeah, it's fun to have those like bits of humanity. There's that scene in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where him and his dad are in the blimp <laughs> and they're talking just father son stuff, and that's like one of my favorite scenes from that film. It's just like, oh, that those little touches of humanity and like family interactions. I love when they can work those in to films and you know the table scene in this film did a great job of that before we jump to the end i am curious what you guys think of taskmaster that was his mcu debut you know we can spoil who the character really is obviously here but i'm curious just in general i wasn't a huge fan of like the look somebody told me that skulls in general don't play well in china and so that's partially why they removed the skull from his face oh really that's totally fair. I'm fine with that, but just his look in general was a little bit more colorful than I appreciated. He really? did still have the ability to watch people and memorize their fights and then be really good at fighting, which I think is a cool power. Yeah. It, was it less? I guess that was still her power, right? They, in the beginning, they made it seem like it was like a machine doing it. But then later on, when they revealed who she was, they're like, oh, she can do that. So I didn't understand what the visor thing, what the purpose of that was. Yeah. I guess, unless it enhanced point. it, I guess. Um, but yeah, I actually didn't mind his design. I thought it looked cool. Personally, he still had like the Taskmaster colors of like the orange and the blue and stuff. Um, I think <laughs> overall, I wanted more from Taskmaster in general. Like, it felt like the last fight in particular felt a little anticlimactic. Like, and I mean, after the like parachuting to the ground and stuff, like it felt like it just kind of (laughs) ended after like 30 seconds. Um, and then the reveal that it was, uh, what's whatever the bad guy Drakeoff is like the main bad guy who was controlling the Black Widow. And yeah, it's revealed that it's really his daughter. So Taskmaster is a woman, which I'm totally fine with. Yeah, Um, I'm fine with the fact that it's like his daughter is an interesting twist uh, because she has like really, she's really scarred up. It turns out when black widow assassinated thought she assassinated Drake off. She blew him up. She, I, but I she survived. I yeah. I like, loved that. Like I, to me, that's the humanity we're talking about. Like her, the whole thing is about Natasha coming to terms with her past and realizing, cause she never quite fit. Like even in the beginning when they're leaving Ohio, she's like, no, I don't want to go. Like, that's my sister. You can't separate us. And that was when Dracoff was like, oh, she's got a fire in her. And, and with that, I loved that because especially the scene where Taskmaster is behind the, the glass and she's like, I know if I let you out of here, you're going to hurt me. And that's okay. I forgive you. And she's like crying and like shaking. Like you could tell that choice was really hard to make. And the first thing that she thought Taskmaster does is attack her. And I liked the fact that they didn't just be like this redemption arc right then. And they're like, you let me go. Therefore, I'll let you go. Because that's not organic to the character. That's never been what that character's about. But I think one, the twist that it's the daughter was perfect because the whole movie was centered around the horrors that these little girls have to go through. And that was like the perfect thing because this is what he did to his own daughter. He drugged her. He controlled her. He basically had her as a walking puppet. And more than that, I felt like it was a really nice bow to Natasha's arc of forgiving herself for the things she's done in the past because that was her biggest regret is she killed a little girl. And they set this up earlier in the film, too, with the when Leon Lennon was like, well, what about his daughter? And she didn't think that she knew. And you can tell she's like it was collateral damage but she's saying it tearfully you could tell that's like a that weighs heavily on her heart so to have that and i loved how quickly i i did love how, maybe i just have bad taste i i think i do and i'm sure the comic section <laughs> will agree after some of my reviews but i feel like i like how it ended so abruptly because the whole purpose of getting that serum in your face and ha- being deprogrammed is Everything you knew is gone. Uh, you just get the entire world dropped out from beneath your feet. And that's exactly what happened. Their fighting fell from the sky. Like, you have to take human data. They're still human. And when she gets kind of desensitized and deprogrammed, it's over. Because that's what happened to all of these girls. Everything they knew, what to do, what to, how to speak, how to act, who to target, life purpose – in a blink of an eye is just gone. And I think that's a powerful moment that it needed to happen abruptly. See, my thing is like, I, I think overall, I wish it wasn't a daughter just because it felt like <clears throat> I like the idea. Like when she tells her like, Oh yeah, like I have to kill this guy, but I used his daughter's collateral damage. So she got killed too. And I'm not, I'm not proud of that. And I was kind of upset that they kind of erased that, but like, Oh, she's fine. Cause I was like, yeah, I didn't mind the I guy being that. alive of like, okay, she, 
I guess he didn't. She thought she killed the guy, but he's back. I can live with that. But it's like, oh, also your biggest regret. Actually, she's not. And it's like, she's not. She's yeah, it turns like, out you're innocent. I mean, not really. Yeah. Like it's like, like I like Black Widow's whole character is like she had a like a very shady past before becoming a superhero. And that's one but of the reasons it, she's a superhero. Does it erase is, it though? Because it doesn't erase it, entire- but it feels like it softens it a little. Yeah, bit. it softens it. And I wish they even just stuck with that. It reminded me a little bit of uh, Rise of Skywalker when you thought Chewie died at the hands of Ray, and I was like, "Oh man, like what a character moment!" Ray has to allow him live with this and has to <laughs> like live with just- the consequences of her actions. And then two minutes later, he's fine. You're like, "Oh, what was the point of that?" It was. It wasn't as bad as that, but I had that vibe of like, "Okay, this is something Natasha." has been dealing with and you know she's probably made up for it with all the lives that she saved since then but let her let that stay as the one thing that she can't undo especially because comic books have a do it. they didn't undo it though well, I mean, she's because not dead whole, and then <laughs> her whole thing is her whole thing is these girls are in slavery her whole thing is a big part of her regret is she walked away from this organization and she got free, but nobody else did. Like that was also a big regret. But they did by the end, though. Like everyone was fine at the end. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) She like goes through the thing, and the whole point is that, at least to me, this is. I mean, by all means, movies all are always interpreted differently. But for me, like, if I thought I killed somebody, and and I'm pulling kind of from back when I was active duty, if I blew them up in that way. I would almost rather they stay dead than come back the way she did because she knows that she's going to remember everything she did, all the people she killed, all the people she tracked down. So that's something that his daughter is going to have to contend with with the rest of her life. She's permanently disfigured. Every time she looks in a mirror, she's going to know exactly what happened to her, both from Scarlet or not from Scarlet, from Natasha and from her dad. And so it, I don't think, I think I would agree with you 100%. If. She was like the helmet comes off. I'm no man type uh, type of moment where she had like, the lip gloss and she looks stunning. And I would agree there because the, the Star Wars one that is like you're on point with that. Like holy crap, that was so cheesy. But like this, I don't feel. I felt like it was done differently. I really do. I feel like it was it was made with nuance and and now you have this entire other scope of trauma to deal with. Of she's alive, but look at the life I. I left for her. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe. Yeah, I, I guess it was too. It's just weird to say like too much redemption <laughs> or too much direct redemption of like literally everything was like undone when it's like I think she already redeemed herself by this point anyway with everything that she's done with S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers. So like I don't need her daughter to come back or the daughter to come back to like once again like hey everything that you did was bad. Maybe not so bad. I mean, yeah, you messed her up and scarred her for life, but she's cool now. She's out of control. Theoretically, she can live as normal of a life as she can at this point. Like, she has her life back, though. And I was like, I don't know if I need that much. You know, I kind of, I would have been fine with her just being Uh, dead. (laughs) I'm kind of with you, Marcus, but uh, it is interesting. It's like interesting to hear your perspective, Leanna, as well. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we should we should move on. I'm curious. Like, the end is the end. I don't know if there's a ton to talk about there. Obviously, Natasha Natasha wins the day. She sets off to go do her thing in the rest of the MCU. And then they sort of set up like there could be this sort of Black Widow TV show or another movie in the future with Yelena. Because then especially once we get the post credit scene, which you guys want to hear your impression of, we see Yelena at the gravesite of Natasha. So obviously this is, you know, post end game. Sort of whistling doing their little whistle sisterly the whistle and then the um, julia louise dreyfus's character shows up of course sort of the she's not victoria hand but i can't the, remember uh, valentina name. fontaine contessa valentina fontaine yeah and so she shows up and it's clear that she's like working uh, let's see yelena is working for her yeah and, and has sort of been set for up, a like, while it seems yeah that's what it seems like so we could go back and like get some more stories of this but she's like, all right, I got your next mission. Here's the guy that you need to take out. This is the guy that, quote unquote, killed Natasha or was responsible for Natasha's death, which is, you know, that's a PR spin on that one. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, it's a picture of Hawkeye. So you're like, oh, okay, this is kind of interesting. This could be what the Hawkeye show is about is Yelena hunting down Hawkeye, which I'm on board for that. That sounds cool. Yeah, that's a good premise for that show. Everyone in the theater like freaked out in a way that <laughs> this is probably the most emotion I've seen a collective group of people show for Hawkeye. 
<laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I didn't know there were like, that many. Did your theater guys. freak out? Everyone gasped, and like one girl stood up and was like disgusted that she, that this woman would lie about Hawkeye like that. Yeah, and I was funny. like, it was cool to me. I was like, oh, okay, people care about Hawkeye. That's cool. I Hawkeye, I like enough. Um, but yeah, that's I, I. I mean, yeah, that seems like that's entirely what that Hawkeye show is going to be about. Is Yelena <clears throat> going after him? And then I guess even going forward, becoming maybe the new Black Widow for the MCU. I mean, she kind of are. I mean, she is a Black Widow. But right. becoming, 2017 like, comic. Yeah, she became the new Black Widow. She replaced her with the Secret Avengers. OK, so uh, so that's definitely where it's going to go. If they're if they're going to honor the comic books, that's definitely where it's going to go. I think I think you guys are right, though. I think they're going to utilize the Hawkeye show to explore, bridge that gap, because it looks like they're going to be doing show, movie, show, movie, show, movie like you wouldn't really understand the reference in the in post credit scene if you didn't watch the Captain uh, Falcon show. Yeah, I think. right. And, well, there were some like theories on that as like, was this supposed to be her debut and, you know, Julia Louise Dreyfus's debut? And did they change that? There was some mm-hmm. rumors oh, saying that they been. refilmed the post credit scene for this Black Widow and made it something completely different. Like originally it was something yeah. else. Oh, wow. Because because Falcon and the Winter Soldier was supposed to be last year, too. And got yeah. delayed because of COVID, but it was going to be after Black Widow, regardless. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so I didn't I, even hear that. That's cool. Because that because last it was supposed to be Black Widow was like last spring, and then Falcon was supposed to be last fall. So it would have happened hmm. before anyway. So yeah, that's yeah. I guess technically, if they didn't change anything, this would have been her no. official debut. But it works out either way. I guess if you've watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And I was I was curious gauging the reaction of like when she came on screen because a, a fair amount of people reacted to seeing her, but I was wondering like how many people have seen Falcon and the Winter Soldier to grasp what this is right. exactly. Did you guys get a sense of that? Of like basically like are people watching these shows? I, I think so. Yeah, my, yeah my people at my theater seemed to know what was going on. Okay. <laughs> I'm just wondering about that. All right. Also, is right. it weird that, uh, I'm sorry, really quick, this, this question answered the big question of like the legendary Budapest mission that we heard about in the first Avengers over and over between Hawkeye and Natasha. We were like, oh, remember Budapest? Remember that? And then we learned in this movie that that was the mission where she assassinated or she thought she assassinated uh, Drake off, right? And then subsequently blew up his daughter. And anyone else think it was weird if like, wait, this is the thing that they've been kind of almost jokingly talking about like ha ha remember Budapest that time you blew up a little girl <laughs> yeah Budapest it's one of those things that Budapest. when they originally call that out like hey this is like that time in Budapest it like makes it it makes the world feel bigger because there's these things that characters are referencing but then yeah. as the movies go on they're like well we need to fill in those blanks like what was Budapest and in a weird way I feel like it makes the world smaller because we now know what that was and since like that's the only mission they ever continue to reference, it just seems like they went on one mission together. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, well, it seems else? like Natasha like brushed it off. I was like, that seems like that would be a sore spot knowing what we know now about that mission. Deal with trauma by making jokes. That's how I do it. Like I, oh, I, I mean I Hawkeye, maybe. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. I mean Natasha. Yeah, it just seems weird that Hawkeye would be the one. Like, Haha, remember that time you did that traumatizing <laughs> thing? <Fair. laughs> Well, they were trapped in. <laughs> they were trapped in an air vent for a week or whatever. So, yeah, that whole mission seemed like bad time. <laughs> no, no good. All right, we should. I'd love to know just overall. Where do you guys rank this one? What do you guys think of it overall in a larger MCU rankings? Hmm, Liana, you seem like you were more solidified on this than me, unless I'm mistaken. Let you go first. Pretty solidified. I really liked. I really. I, I, Endgame was my favorite, just because I. I like a nice closure, and I like the the in the beginning, new beginning aspect of it. I really liked Far From Home too, and yeah. I was a really big sm- uh, soft spot for the first Iron Man, just because I don't know. Grew up with Marvel, and so to see like the bigger world start to share the joy of these characters meant a lot to me. Just looking back as a kid, I would say. I would say I definitely I left the theater being like, oh, my God, that might be one of my favorites. But I think I'm pretty comfortable saying it's in like my top three. I think it just nudged Iron Man out of that top three spot for me. Wow. I think in game far from home. I, I don't know if it's. I don't know if I like it more than far from home or not. I think I think so. But just because I think 
I related to it a little bit on like yeah. a, you know, I, you know, not to bring the vibe of the podcast down, but like I grew up, you know, homeless and, you know, a lot of trauma from four years old and up. And I know how that changes a person. And I related to that in a way that I felt like they didn't cheapen it for entertainment factor. And that's really hard to do. And I felt like they told a really cool tale about a character that so many people like. So I think for me, it's earned that top three spot. <laughs> awesome. What about you, Marcus? You sound like you're not quite sure yet, which is definitely what I'm feeling. I know uh, talking to Alex Van, or sorry, Alex Van Stadnick before this podcast <laughs> recording, he was like, yeah, me and my friends do this ranking where it's like God tier level, mid tier, and then toward the dark world tier. And I'm curious, like in those tiers where you would put it for me, I think this is like, high mid tier. I really liked it. It's probably like top half of Marvel movies for me, but I don't, you know, that, that top half is so like stacked. Yeah. Like there's a lot of good movies that I really, really enjoy. Like I really liked civil war. I really liked infinity war. Both Spider-Man films are up there for me. Winter soldiers is really good film. Like those films just feel like really, really solid. And while this one was, was good, even great. Um, I don't know. It's just hard to compete with the best that Marvel has to offer these days. Didn't have that classic Marvel feel too that Endgame and Civil War had too? Like those felt organically like superhero movies. For this one was very much split between drama and superhero. Sure. Yeah, I think my thing. I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Ben. Is like middle up a chain. I don't have an official ranking of the films, honestly. So I, I don't know what that puts it above or below. Maybe. Um, but yeah, upper mid tier. But I think this will ultimately wind up being one of the more memorable films overall because of how different it feels just tonally and even stylistically than those other films so even if it's not like top 10 it's going to be one that i don't forget as easily even if i only see it once yeah uh, that's a good point because this could have been like super generic spy movie fair and i'm sure some people will criticize it for that but it definitely had a marvel spin to it and i think it was unique in the in the way it took the spy espionage stuff yeah, there's some great set piece moments in there. So, yeah, I'd Friday, say about then we went Saturday. <laughs> so you've seen it twice. So you're definitely you remember it more than I. I mean, I'll probably I want to watch it again. That's probably a good judge. Like if I would watch this again sooner than later. Cool. Well, I think that does it for us. Uh, Black Widow. That's a buy. Definitely. Is that the official term of like thumbs up? Is that our <laughs> thumbs up? Is that's, that's right. a buy? <laughs> three three thumbs up. It sounds like. Check it out if you haven't already. And if you haven't already, I don't know why you were here. But <laughs> regardless, thank you for watching or listening to this episode. Please like and subscribe and come back. And if you like it, we'll do more of these. Let us know what you think of Spoiled in the comments. Till next time, everybody. Bye-bye.